When I question the meaning of life, I tend to wonder, what did we really come here to experience? To me, pure happiness was experiencing the ocean water hugging my feet on a fine sunny day at Curl Curl Beach, or getting a little annoyed at the seagulls trying to steal my fish and chips on a fine Saturday Arvo at Collaroy Beach. But I have to be honest with you though, I've never once looked back at my youth and be like, I miss my friends, I miss my times there, and I really miss being young, because frankly, I never did. There was never a minute of my real youthful day that I ever wished to return back to. And finally moving out of that reality for good was the greatest blessings of my life. I never really knew what the feeling of blooming youth truly felt like until I was 28 years old. 90% of my youth was either spent crying alone in my bedroom and getting chest pains before my assignments are due, or feeling pressured by the fact that our youth had to be spent getting stressed over having to achieve a 99.958R. Anxiety was my normal operating state and depression became something that I was very familiar with all through to my 20s. What was even the concept of breathworks, mantras, positive affirmations, or even self-soothing? Those concepts were absolutely foreign to me. The only phrases that were always normal for me at the time was to be a good daughter, don't fail the exams, and don't waste money. The first time I ever experienced the euphoric feeling of confidently lifting weights at the gym was when I was 22 years old. Till then, I wasn't allowed to go to the gym, let alone build basic social skills, experience puppy love, go shopping and hang out with my girlfriends after school, or even experience a normal sense of having an individuality. Even though I've always wanted to be fit and healthy, but I was always told not to spend money on therapy because that would be a waste. Therefore, my relationship with money had been a very tumultuous one. I started to buy into the fact that my mental health didn't matter and therefore my existence on this earth also didn't matter. And God forbid you, I am so glad to no longer be a part of the days where every day felt suicidal. So I realized that today, I can never take my youth back. I can never go back in time as the 15 years old version of me to take myself to have matcha ice cream while I perhaps do her braid and also buy her a cute $15 lipstick to wear. I can never go back in time to the 18 years old version of me and protect myself from getting sexually abused online by a 28 years old creep just because she believed that he was her daily source of happiness. Navigating through depression after HSC was difficult. It was very difficult seeing my classmates travel around Europe and Asia without me, going to shopping, organizing friends picnic day, and going out to road trips for fun without me. It was very hard to see people progress towards official relationships on Facebook and celebrating their birthdays, New Year's Eve and Christmas without me. And so I decided that this very man was my only source of happiness. So one, you are so cute by this creep meant the world to me at the time. Fucked, I know. Fun fact though, my dad has just told me last year that the dude was exposed online by a bunch of young girls for sexual abuse and gaslighting. I didn't really care though, because I had long moved on. But if I were to ever meet him in person, I would just literally say to his face that you are a piece of shit, I don't accept your apology, and you should go to therapy, period. But what I promised myself 
that I would do for me leading up to the days before I turned 30 was give myself everything that she's ever wanted, even if my bank account says that I'm not capable of doing so. You want to build a successful YouTube channel to help young girls thrive? Let's do it. You want to go and swim your ocean laps, 20 lap swims, deadlift 70 kilos, film beach clips all over Sydney, and feel like an absolute Marvel character? Let's do it. And so I did. And that, my friend, was what the first taste of true liberation felt like. The two years leading up to my 30s, I have never once told myself, oh, you're getting old, because I've been sheltered my whole life. So I was not ready to give up this opportunity to relive my youth again to the concept of, oh, the best days are over, because it never is. For me, it hasn't even started. So as I started getting deeper and deeper into the personal development realm, ranging from Tony Robbins, Matt Hussey, Melissa Pierce, Joy Dispenza, or even Mel Robbins, I started to really believe in this whole concept that you are the placebo. Since I know that I can never relive my 16 years old days again, I was determined to reborn in every single stage of my life, regardless if I was 30, 40, 50, 60s or beyond. So I stopped letting people tell me that I was too old to listen to K-pop. These days, I love the girls from IVE, Le Seraphim, Aspa, Baby Monster, Illit and New Jeans. Shout out to my girls who have really helped my mental health thrive. I wasn't going to let anybody tell me that I had to get married or birth a child before 30 because apparently only successful women in society do so. Well, screw the norm, I said. I'm not following it. And damn, talk about another taste of liberation. As a fearless introvert, I've always enjoyed being a loner and of course a happy loner in my own terms. There is something so freeing, so liberating about spending time alone, culling the stray cat on the park or sitting alone on Manly's Wharf while I enjoy my $4 potato salad and go and check out the new yogurt shop that is apparently so much more better than yoga berry. Now that is what living truly feels like. Many times I would see young people cuddling on the sands during their school holidays and softly making out for hours at Palm Beach. And I would see young couples at Red Leaf Beach splashing the ocean water at each other, then sitting down to watch the skies turn pink as they gaze lovingly in each other's embrace. And all these years have already passed. I've always wished that the girl who could finally experience all of this could be me. And you know what, guys? It will be me. So after a decade of failed relationships, I have never given up on the dream of meeting the man who could always remind me that my goals are never too big to strive for and that we will always be number one to each other. Since I've again only normalized the concept of be a good daughter, don't fail at school and don't waste money. I've only been in relationship with men that reinforces to me how unchosen and disempowered my life was. But no longer will this be my narrative so recently, I've made a new promise to myself that I will become the embodiment of my dream man until he materializes in my reality. So I began making a list of the qualities of my dream man, and they are, one, my man has a thriving relationship with himself and he is deeply fulfilled in every aspect of his life, which makes our relationship a hella awesome one. Two, we always have the most wholesome, intimate and adventurous sex that makes us both inspired and rejuvenated right after, every time. Three, we always get to share countless laughters on the beach, swim long laps together, shed together and watch the skies turn pink as our souls dance by the ocean water together. Four, we have deep 
and meaningful conversations about spirituality. And we both believe in the infinite possibilities that life has to offer us. Five, we invest our money in the most memorable and enriching experiences because we have deeply fulfilling careers and we are both armed with high income skills that opens all doors to an abundant life for both of us. So slowly, I embodied all the characteristics that I listed out, including the superficial ones like, number one, he must be fit and have a six pack. So I went on to build my dream bikini bod as the girl who couldn't swim in the baby pool of Bondi icebergs to reaching 2000 meters within 10 months. Two, he must have a thriving sense of self. So I went on to do all the inner work needed for me to have a thriving self-esteem. And three, he must be ambitious and entrepreneurial minded. So I went on to build all the high income skill sets to make myself invincible, whether I choose to leave an unfulfilling job or get made redundant. And I must say, the journey is what gave my life true purpose. It was absolutely satisfying to the core. So ladies, be the embodiment of your dream man and he will materialize in your reality, even if the opposite is true right now. And this goes the same with female friendships. Every single time I sat on the wharf, I've always dreamt of finally cultivating female friendships where there will be no, I love you honey, or I love you darling, followed by favor asking, useless obligations, trauma dumps, and constant guilt trips on every catch up. There will be no specific targets, KPIs, agendas, or outcomes needing to be reached as a result of every catch up. There will be no codependency, overbearingness, or playing the role of a free therapist on every catch up. There will be no talking about spiteful feelings towards exes that makes me fear and despise men. And finally, there will be no talking about salary caps or settling for unfulfilling jobs and claiming that that is the only option in life because it's not. Is it truly possible for me, I ask myself? Is it realistic enough to hope for? And again, I had to look deep within myself and ask me, am I ready to let go of the fear of being forever alone so that I can only meet true friends that are meant to be in my life once and for all? When your life completely falls apart and all you see is a manifestation of your lifetime's fear, don't be scared. There have been countless times where I sit on the wharf by myself after I've achieved the biggest wins of my beach clips. And then I'd cry alone because I always wished that the people that I loved would be here to celebrate my wins with me. And yet, my life has still been an ongoing miracle. So if you are able to turn self-pity into self-empowerment, then you are forever set free from life's limitations. All the little things that are mundane to everyone will mean the world to you. And being happy will no longer have conditions placed upon it. For example, when I receive comments like, your videos are life changing. Gosh, that means the whole world to me. It's like light is ignited from my heart because all these words that you're telling me online may be something that I never get to hear from people that I love in my real life. And that to me is my life's miracle. And that's right, we are not letting anybody control our life destiny anymore. And sadness or self-pity is no longer a part of our narrative. I'm telling you guys right now that every tear that you've cried will not be wasted if you choose the path of true freedom so never give in to people who tell you to settle for a crappy, just okay, 5 out of 10 life that was not meant for the highest version of you. 
Never give in to relationships that keeps you weak, chubby, in self-doubt and disempowered because you can have the best of the best man who gives you the 10 out of 10 treatment once you embody him yourself. Never give in to friendships that is built on narcissism, guilt, fear, codependency and unnecessary obligations just because you fear of being alone. Never believe the reality where you are isolated from the world and that you are destined to die all alone. You are not. The universe always rewards you when you go all in with yourself. And finally, never believe the reality where you don't get to have your dreams come true because girls and boys as well, your dream is waiting for you. Your dream is waiting for you to tap into your highest power. Your dream is waiting for you to awaken to your truth. So don't give up on yourself. Never let your past self limit the possibilities of your future. And I hope you guys always remember that. This is Patty here again, and I hope you enjoy this video. See you soon.